Hello, welcome back for another read aloud series. This is grade one, all about astronomy. This is domain six of the CKLA listening and learning strand. This first lesson is an introduction to the sun and space. I want you to think about the sky you see during the day or night and that it actually has two parts. The part with air and clouds that looks blue during the day and is close to the earth is called the atmosphere. And a huge black part even farther away is called outer space. Now listen carefully in this read aloud to hear about some objects that you can see in the sky. And also hear which of these objects are actually located in outer space. All right, let's get started. Have you looked up at the sky lately? What did you see? Perhaps you saw clear blue sky, or maybe there were a few puffy white clouds floating around, or maybe the sky was streaked with gray clouds. Occasionally, when you look up in the sky, you can see an airplane or a bird flying by or even a red balloon someone accidentally let loose. Some days it is fun to lie on your back in the grass and stare up at the interesting shapes of the puffy white clouds overhead. Perhaps you or someone you know has even flown in an airplane up among the clouds high above the Earth's surface. You can think of the sky in two layers. There is a big blanket or bubble of air that surrounds Earth. This bubble covers the whole Earth, all the ground and oceans and everything else on the Earth's surface, including you. This bubble of air is called the atmosphere. But the blue atmosphere does not tell the whole story. The second layer of the sky is all of outer space, which lies beyond the atmosphere an endless expanse of stars and moons and other objects. Of course, during the day here on Earth, it is easy to forget that outer space is there, but it always is. The Earth, your home, <clears throat> is just one little object moving around in the middle of it all, like a speck of sand amidst all the sands in the ocean. During the day, the sun shines over the Earth <clears throat> shedding light on all the animals and plants that live on the Earth's surface. The sun's rays spread across the skies which appear blue to your eyes. The sun itself is a star. It is not part of the Earth or Earth's sky. In fact, the sun is far, far away from Earth. So far away that it would take more than three months to catch it or to reach it in the fastest rocket ship. But even if you could reach the sun in a rocket ship, you would never be able to get close to it. That is because the sun, like other stars, is an enormous ball of very hot hydrogen gas. Everything that gets too close to it burns up instantly. Just how enormous is the sun? Think about this. If the sun was a huge bowl and the earth was a little marble, you could stuff about one million marbles into that bowl. In other words, it would take a million earths to fill the sun. The sun is just one out of billions of stars in space. However, the sun is our star. It is the earth's star. Without the sun, earth would be cold, lifeless, just a hunk of rock. All living things on earth, from the trees to the bees to the flowers and the fleas, rely on the sun in one way or another. The heat, light, and energy of the sun allow life to flourish here on earth. The rising sun signals the start of a new day. In the morning, the sun rises in the east and its rays shed light across the land. People wake up and get ready for a new day. Getting dressed and eating breakfast and then traveling outside to wherever it is that they go. To school 
to the office, to a store, or simply out for a walk. Have you ever noticed your shadow on the ground? If the sun is behind you while you are walking down the street or the sidewalk, then your body blocks the sun's rays and creates a shadow. Your shadow is not the only shadow in the world. Clouds cast shadows as well. So do buildings and trees. Have you ever rested under the shade of a tree on a hot summer day? If so, you are resting in the shadow cast by the tree's leaves and branches. On a hot summer day, you can feel the warmth of the sun on your skin. And if you do not use sunscreen, then you may get a sunburn. Ouch! The sun's energy can burn your skin. And that's bad. Sunburns hurt. And if you get sunburned too often, it can cause serious damage to your skin. On the other hand, the sun's light is also good for you. When you when your bare skin is exposed to sunlight, your body creates vitamin D, which is one of the many vitamins your body needs in order to stay healthy and strong. So playing outside in the sunshine isn't just fun, it's good for you too. At the end of each day, when the sun goes down in the west, the sky changes. It isn't blue anymore. The sky becomes black and new sights appear. Instead of clouds and birds and blue sky, you may see an array of shining stars. You may see something else as well, not the sun, but another object hovering in the skies above, the moon. Over the next several days, or read aloud, you will learn about the sun, the moon, the stars, and all sorts of amazing and interesting facts about outer space. The place beyond the Earth's sky or atmosphere. The study of the stars and other things in outer space is called astronomy. The read alouds you will hear in the coming days will provide a basic introduction to astronomy, but it's only a beginning. There is so much to learn about the stars and other objects in space that you can spend the rest of your life studying it and never run out of new things to learn and discover. That is because astronomy is the study of everything beyond our little home that we call Earth. And if astronomers have learned anything through the years, they know that there is no end to the amount of new knowledge and surprises to be discovered in the study of the stars in outer space. So, did you hear which objects that you see are actually in outer space? Comment below and of course like um, this video so that you will get notifications to see more of these videos and more are coming. See ya!